Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the new features that ES2021 is going to be offering. I think it's really important that as a software developer that you stay up to date with the latest syntax and versions so that you can use it in your applications. This way you can simplify your code and make it more readable. Furthermore, during coding interviews, if they ask you a tricky question about a feature that just recently came out, you'll, you know, you'll be well informed and know how to answer those questions. So I'll be looking at four of the new features. Um, and I will have links to each section in the comment below so that you can jump, and along with references to their proposals. If you enjoy this kind of content, uh, please subscribe and hit that thumbs up. Anyways, let's get to it. One of my favorite features that I'm happy is coming in is a replace all method function that will be added to strings. It will allow you to go in and replace a specific substring with another value. This removes the need of having to use global regex expressions, which I really appreciate. So let's take a look at how we originally do it um, before this update, which is normally done with a replace statement using global regex. So let's just take a look at that. We put a replace statement um, and we're gonna replace L with I. Um, and as you can see, it's replaced all the L's with I's. Now with the new method, it will allow us to come in here and just simply append the replace all function. Um, and the first parameter is what value we're replacing followed by what value we want it replaced with. So as you can see, both of these values are the same. Next up, we have the promise.any function. For those of you who know the promise.race function, the project is very similar in the resolve part, but in the reject, it's slightly different. The new any command only rejects when all values, when all promises that you've passed the any have failed. Otherwise, it will resolve on the first successful promise. So let's take a look um, and see kind of how that works. So I set up a little quick template here. I created two promises. The first promise, uh, promise reject, always will reject, and promise resolve will always resolve. So if we pass in a reject promise and a resolve promise, we would expect it to resolve. If we passed in two rejects, we'd expect it to reject. And if we passed in, let's just say, a whole bunch of rejects, but one resolve, we would still expect it to resolve. When any does fail, the returned exception is a list of all the rejections. So you're able to go through and see why each promise rejected. Another feature coming in ES2021 is the ability to use numeric separators. If you take a look at an example, you see that I've assigned num to some large number. It's really hard just by looking at it at a glance to determine if that's a million, a billion, hundred million, uh, or what exactly the magnitude is. By using numeric iterables, we're able to make our code more readable and understand numbers quicker at a glance. With this new feature, you'll be allowed to use underscores within your numbers to help split them up and make it easier and more readable. As you can see, by adding the underscores in, we've determined that this is actually a billion. This separator also works in floats as well. Uh, and I have seen many other languages adopting this kind of standard. Another feature is they're adding support for a weak ref. A weak ref doesn't prevent the garbage collector from reclaiming an object. This is particularly useful in caches where you don't want the object to remain in rem memory simply because it's in the cache. I do have an example, but it's something hard to demo it's not very sim simple to reproduce results every time since the garbage collector can change. But I will go through the example that they show on the proposal and explain roughly how it works. In this example, we're creating an image cache. Our getImage function returns an image. For simplicity, we're just gonna return an object. And we're creating a weak cache with that getImage function. That function will be called by a key and if the value exists in the cache, it will be returned. Otherwise, it will be loaded from the disk. Using weak references will allow for values to not be floating in the cache that don't have any references outside of it. This means that array buffers won't be stored in the cache unless they're being accessed by some pointer. As you can see, this can greatly reduce the amount of memory used by your application. Finally, they've added in support for using logical assignment operators. So what this is means is 
and a sine operator would be using plus equals or divide equals. Um, so now we can use operators such as and, and, or, or, and the most recent one, the two question marks, and use them as assignments as such. So and and equals or 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 equals or question question equals. Um, so it's just a way to help reduce, I guess, the lines of code that your application takes. Um, we're going to do a quick example uh, how it can be usable. So in this example, we're going to create a function that prints out a message. And if no message provided, I want it to print out hello world. Obviously, you could simply specify hello here, um, and then it would you know, then print out that default. But in this example, I want to use logical assignment operators. This can be more useful in cases when you're doing objects and you don't want to be mutable, so you can't just set a default value. So the first thing we need to do is print out message. Um, and then next, we need to assign a default value to message if it's null. And to do this, we're going to use the double question mark operator. Um, and we're going to set it up to hello world. So as you can see, if no value is provided, it prints out hello world. Otherwise, it will print out whatever text is passed to it. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was informative about all the new features that are coming in ES 2021. Share in the comments section below about which of these features you're most excited about or if there's one that I didn't mention. Anyways, talk to you guys later.